Two other big stories we want to talk about tonight, one of which being the decision by the Memphis Shelby County School Board to retain the national search for, firm for a new superintendent, uh, pay them another $19,000, and uh, they're hoping that by this time next year, next year, Reverend Whalen, the former school board member, that uh, we'll finally have a superintendent. Uh, one proviso in all this was that Tony Williams, the interim superintendent, will stay on, uh, but she has also agreed to pull her name out of the hat. In term and you had advocated for this on the show not long ago. That is the one thing I believe that restores the whole process, restores integrity to the process. Now, and I'm proud of the board, I'm proud of Chairman Green, I'm proud of them for not doubling down on wrong. However, if they don't do the job correctly, we're just going to be right back in the same place in another year. I have no problem for taking a year to find the, the right, right. I have no problem with it. And for Tony Williams, it's the, really the best of both, both worlds for her. She's going to make almost $400,000 a year with an interim tag, which really inflates and increases her ability to get a job anywhere, not only in the United States, but in, but in the world mm -hmm. as a superintendent. So I think it's a win-win if they do their job right. I want to talk about also the, uh, the terrible storm we had last Sunday and all week long. We've been seeing tens of thousands of people without power. Some are still without power as we speak on a Sunday. Uh, and it's been one heck of a week to be without power given how hot it's been. Susan, how do you think uh, the MLGW's handled this? They've been very forthcoming in saying we are way behind our tree trimming, but we also had the mayor uh, out with a letter today, his, his weekly letter saying there's all kinds of things in place that should get us to a better spot in three or four years in terms of infrastructure investment and what have you. Well, let's just hope we don't have any major storms in the next three or four Which we years. will. But uh, yeah, first I have to I have to compliment Light Gas and Water and and um, uh, Mr. McGowan. Their communications on the issue have been excellent. He's been in front of the camera every, every day. day. Mm -hmm. uh, it's more than his predecessor ever did, and I applaud him for that because people want to hear what's going on. I think by putting things on the internet, it's kind of silly letting people go and see what areas of town are still out. If you're still out, how are you going to, don't have any power, how are you, how good's the internet going to do you? But anyway, I think it's, they've done a good job. But four years ago, Light, Gas, and Water had a study done. It was an operation study and, it, and a complementary engineering study. And that study said that the number one reason for outages is trees and overgrowth. And light gas and water needs to step up its cutting back of trees and overgrowth. And it also said um, to cut back on number of employees. They did not do that. And mm -hmm. of course, McGowan says, now I'm here and I'm going to do that. At what point are we supposed to believe that light, gas, and water is really going to take care of yeah. all of that? I want to hear from Chris on this. I've got about 30 seconds left. What are your thoughts about how this is handled and how it's gone down? Yeah, I agree with that. And I, I know that uh, Mr. McGowan's pretty new on the job, so we're going to have to hold him to his word. But some serious deferred maintenance and infrastructure issues that should have been addressed a long time ago, they fessed up. Let's see what happens now. Now, I understand they're in a difficult spot because they cannot independently set rates like a lot of other utilities. They got to go to the council, so maybe there's not enough funds. But regardless, it's it's trimming and cutting trees. This is this is imminently doable. It needs to be done, um, and it needs to be done quickly. So we'll hold them accountable. All right. Let's hope that they uh, can get it done quickly. They don't have J.T. Young to kick around anymore. No, that's true. <laughs> You just say he did not need to be kicked around? Yeah, well, I'm saying he ain't around the kicker. Okay. I think he had a count on myself. I don't, I, don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. <laughs> my thanks to you and for all your opinions. <laughs> and my thanks to you at home as well. We'll see you next time for ABC 24 This Week.